Do you go by Nick or prefer Nick? I go by whatever you can get right, honestly. Uh, I get called everything that rhymes with Nick. Uh, so <laughs> Nick or Nicholas. I'm, I'm good either way, really. Cool. Little Nicky. Yeah, I get Rick, Dick, Stick, Rick, Rick Dick. Dick. <laughs> like, dude, it's like everything but Nick. I Nick, get. yeah, for sure, man. What is your like, goal with the group? Is it to get people into like your product or service or? Yeah, I mean, I'd, you know, I'd love to have more people buy it. So, you know, my, primarily my business is um, outsourced telemarketing. I have a call center overseas. So, you know, I'm, I'd love to have people, you know, work with us on that. But, you know, even just getting someone to come to my website is a win for sure. You know, if I can get that traffic to the site. Um, you know, we have a, we have like 40, 40 blog articles and, and really my goal too, with, with these videos is I'd like to get them implemented on my website and get, um, kind of a small blog, blog article or transcripts. I've done some of it before. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of get back to that process. So, I mean, we'll get some, some traction with this right here in the Facebook group, but then, you know, I definitely plan on sharing it and kind of marketing this video later too. Cool. So I think we are finally live. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're at. Or hey, I, I forgot I wanted to do my Carol Baskin. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens out there. I've got uh, Nicholas Ayers with me today. Nicholas, if you're not sure who he is, he is an absolute expert stud when it comes to video marketing. I initially found you through uh, your YouTube channel. And I've seen obviously a bunch of content that you've put out there. Um, but I would love for you to take a second too, if you want, and just kind of introduce yourself, talk about some of your background for anyone who's watching this. Um, yeah. And we'll go from there and just kind of have a conversation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, for allowing me to be here um, and having this conversation. So yeah, my, my background uh, since 1997 uh, long before uh, I was ever in insurance, which started in 2005, long before Facebook existed, long before YouTube existed, long before uh, a large part of the internet existed, my background has been in video. Uh, I got my start uh, in content creation, shooting video, editing video. I worked in a, uh, I worked uh, a lot of time in a public access TV station, uh, and before in those times, in you know the late 90s, there was no uh, video marketing had a much different turn, like definition. You know, you were making videos uh, like in public access because you didn't have the money to uh, go on regular TV. And so you were like shouting for joy because, you know, uh, you were on daytime TV on public access uh, next to whatever. And, yeah. or you made videos for like boardroom presentations or sales presentations, things like that. TV and, commercials. 
Yeah, or even low scale. Or, I mean, a lot of times it was people making video content to go show in a sales presentation in some some demonstration uh, where they'd have five people show up or 50 people show up and they were showing a video uh, through a projector or something or VHS deck. <laughs> <And, laughs> uh oh. You're, you're yeah. telling us how old you are now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another thing. I mean, people will laugh when I tell them I'm, I'm this close to 40. So um, that is how we got my start. I fell in love with the editing side um, and the, you know, how to make video. And I like to make a lot of video. And here in my office, we've got all kinds of gadgets and toys. And I do that because I don't, uh, I don't play golf and I don't go to the bar. Uh, I go to B and H photo instead and buy ridiculous amounts of expensive gear. Um, so that's how I got my start. And 2012 or 2005 really is when I got into the insurance industry. 2012 is when I opened up my first scratch agency, zero dollars in the bank zero customers in the book had to figure out a way to get business is it, it was either figure out a way to do it or you were stuck eating popcorn and pop schools for dinner every night and that wasn't really something i was uh really interested in doing and so i fell in love with the marketing side and learning marketing and learning uh why people make certain decisions i was in my now mid to late 20s at that time or closer closer to 30s and and it was a necessity for me. I had to figure this out. And so I've, I went down the Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole uh, and you know, started learning all about copy and copywriting. Started learning all about, um, at that time it was Facebook ads too. And a lot, a lot of like how to tell your story, how to, how to get people to make buying decisions. Uh, not so much on the platforms, but more so on the human psychology side and uh, figuring that stuff out. I love it. I love it to this day. I, I mean, I, I admit I love it a lot more than I like insurance. I still have an independent agency and we still run an agency, uh, but I love marketing. It's, it's something that I just geek out on. I don't really geek out on insurance. You know, you can hold that against me, but that is how I got my start. And then combining what I knew about how to make video with how to get people to buy stuff. And I was able to, you know, try to figure out, okay, how do we put these two things together? Uh, not just through branding videos, not just through, uh, direct response videos even, but just, you know, how do we leverage the platforms that have the data? They know who we are. They know who our customers are. I tell people Google knows more of, you know, the Illuminati is fearful for how much data, you know, Google has on them. <laughs> so Google knows everything. And so I, I, I decided to, you know, put all my chips on, on Google for now. And uh, until something better comes along, Yeah. but I decided to put all my chips on that side because Google knows everything. So if I can, get in front of people and if i can really hone in on what to say to them and that's great i love youtube ads youtube ads is my that's my bias it's my preference and i, I like it because youtube is the second largest website visited in the yeah. in the world and uh, only only uh topped by google who owns youtube so you're able to leverage all that data to get in front of people and getting in front of people is never the hard part it's then what do you say and, and right. what do you do when you are then in front of them and so that's where i spend a lot of my time is uh i put a lot of content on my channel that shows you know blind monkey can figure out how to get in front of people right uh, but it's really it's really trying to figure out once we get there what do we say that makes them want to take action and that's what we focus on you know i so you know, I've done, I'm kind of uh, so much that you said right there, like speaks a lot to me. I, I got into the insurance industry kind of around the same time that you did. Um, you know, I really fell in love with the marketing side. I, I kind of look at it like, you know, sales, you're selling one-on-one -on -one, or maybe you're selling to a, a small group of people, but you know, when it comes to marketing, it's like you're selling to the masses, right? Um, so it, it's, it's almost addictive in that, in that sense, I feel like too. So I totally feel you on that side of it. Um, with video marketing, you know, I wouldn't say that's my strong suit by any means, but when I did get into some video marketing, probably about a year or year and a half ago, two years ago, specifically with Lead Heroes, I, I realized it's almost like you're cloning yourself. You have like a clone of yourself who can pitch or, or market, and they're going to say the same thing every time exactly how you want to. Yeah. Um, and when you see these views that you can pay for with paid marketing, it's, it's explosive. It really is. It's just yeah. fuel on a fire. I, uh, you know, I, I, I tell people the way that I, I, I explain exactly what you're talking about. I say it's like having an automated salesperson 24 hours a day, yep. seven days a week. They never call in sick. They never ask for a pay raise. They never try to take vacation. It's consistently done 
all the time and you never have to worry about, <laughs> you know, it, it, you never have to worry about it. And it is an extension of yourself, right? I mean, it's, it's how you scale. Video, I say, is, is, is really, other than you and me sitting down and having coffee together and looking at each other in the eyes and, you right. know, staring at each other's face, you know, uh, non-romantically uh, or romantically, whatever, <laughs> you, whatever your preference is, I don't care. But, you know, other than that, Video is the next best thing when it comes to being the most emotional way to communicate with people uh, because we can see each other. We can hear each other. We can see mannerisms. It, it touches on a lot more of the sensory gates that we have. But other than that, it's scalable. And I can't go to coffee with you every single day because right. I might have to go to coffee with somebody else. Right. And I can only drink so much coffee in a day. Right. There's only so many days in that, and you know, in a week, and et cetera. But with video, I'm allowed. I'm able to be in, really, if I'm in a central locale or if I'm globally or nationally, I'm able to be in so many places at once, delivering the same consistent message. And so it's it's a scale. Like I tell people, you should do the, like the in-person stuff. Like you right. know, there's a lot of people who are probably watching this who do probably a lot of. Um, they might do a lot of in-person sales, uh, with like final expense or life insurance or whatever, and you know, your way of doing businesses is you want to go talk to somebody. And I tell people, you should, you should do that still. Like there's, I'm not telling you you shouldn't. I'm just saying it, that's hard to scale. That's hard to multiply because <laughs> you're, there's only yeah. one of you. Um, but video allows you to kind of be in all those places at, at, at once and, and at multiple times. Well, one thing you, you mentioned earlier that I wanted to touch on. So, you know, and this was, I think for me, this felt like a barrier and I don't think it really was. And you talk about how much money you spend on equipment and I, I am an amateur, I'm sure compared to you in many ways, but you know, you, I feel like a lot of agents. So again, if, if you are a senior insurance agent out there and you're, you're watching this or you're, you're watching the replay and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, this guy's an expert and he has a ton of money that he's thrown at equipment. It doesn't I don't use any of it for ads. I don't use any of it for ads. So you just use like an iPhone if you're shooting for an ad? Yeah, I mean, I'm smart. So I use an Android, uh, not an iPhone. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm just kidding. So um, yeah, I have all of this stuff. You know, I've got the drones and the gimbals. And right. I got a camera there, a camera there, a camera there, obviously here, a uh, camera down there. I've got all kinds of cameras and I got all kinds of lights. But I don't use any of that for ads. I use that because for the, for the same reason that some guys will go buy, you know, three pairs of sneakers or, you know, a certain golf club right. because yeah. they like it and sure. that's fine. And I, I like making, I still enjoy making content. That's why I put content out on my YouTube channel. I like educating and putting out and making videos. I like it. Um, that's my hobby, but for my ads, I'm trying to, you know, there might be a, a slight instance where I might use something else, but for the most part, for the most part, 99% of the time, it's my cell phone. Just your phone. Yeah. And then that's, that's, it's my phone. And that's the thing. That's the message I would definitely get out there for any agents watching this is you don't have to have all the high tech. Obviously, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. There's, there's lenses. There's cameras. Like Nick just mentioned, you can get a drone and you can get really cool shots. But it, you can just start with your phone. You know, I, all would, you uh, I would also add that if you try to, you know, and it is a barrier to entry because that's, that is a mindset thing people think. They think, well, they're, and let's address why, right? Let's, let's talk about right. why they think this. Most people don't like to be on camera. They're not used to it. They're not comfortable on camera. Mm -hmm. um, they don't, you know, they turn into Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights and they're like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, they don't like the way they sound. They don't like the way they look. All this sure. Those are natural insecurities that people who aren't used to being on camera often have. Yeah. And don't get it wrong. I mess up a ton on camera. You just don't see it because I edited it out. But <laughs> they, they have these natural insecurities. And so they think, and this is just my observation of, of having worked with lots of people. They think that if they get a better camera, if they get better lights, if they, if they get all this stuff, that somehow that's a Band-Aid or a magic wand. Right for their own insecurities and but it doesn't work but what i'll say on that is i tell people like in our program often you know if it looks like an ad it gets treated like an ad and yeah. how do most people treat ads well when they know they're being sold and they know there's something inauthentic polished you know coming at them a lot of times natural buyer shields go up 
and people are defensive. They don't click. want to hear. It. They don't want yeah, to be click. sold. I'm done. Yeah. X, right. the so X? I'm done. if it looks like an ad, guess how it gets treated? Like an ad. Yeah. You don't want that. You want to, you, all video is, I don't put any, you know, I don't, I, I can do all the special effects. I don't do that in my videos. All I care about doing in my videos is making a human connection. That's all I care about doing. All I care about doing. I try to tell people when I, when I go around the country and I, I speak on stages and, I, and I'm, I'm working with people, I always tell them, you have to remember, this is video marketing, not video marketing. Meaning we're not emphasizing the video. Right. We're emphasizing the marketing. And the marketing, that means the story, the message, the call to action, um, the structure, the framework. We're, met, we're focusing on that. Video is just the vehicle. That's all it is. Until holograms come out and we can talk to each other like this is Star Wars. Like, <laughs> this is what we got. It's and so vi video is just the vehicle by which we deliver the package, the, the message. And yeah. when you wrap your head around that, that's when you can have that. That's what, number one. That's when you realize I don't care if I say, um, I don't care. I don't care about any of those. Things. I don't care if I got a double chin. I don't care if I've got hair coming out of my double chin. Because <laughs> uh, you're only interested in making a human connection. I feel, I feel like that was a subtle dig at my beard, Nick. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Listen, you and I have probably been growing a beard for the same amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like what, what Nick was just saying right there. I mean, you can leverage being an amateur because you come across more authentic. I mean, that's essentially, and, and I totally agree with that. You know, the ads that will really catch me if I'm on Facebook and I'm scrolling are the ones where it looks like it might be someone from my friend's list that shared a video and I'm like, oh, is this a, a personal video? Is this yeah. like a, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to market or sell. Um, but yeah, if, it, if it's really polished and, and so the people who have this mental barrier where they, they think I don't have the money or I don't have the equipment to do this type of marketing, um, the reality is, is that you can actually win by being an amateur, which, you know, kind of sounds yeah. backwards, but yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And the only thing I tell people on that note is you still, you know, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to look like you're, you know, Bernie from a weekend at Bernie's, right? <laughs> right. You know, I'll, I'll get people on there and, and they, they, they finally get on camera and they're generally not Ben Stein. You know who Ben Stein is? Yes. Like yes. They're generally not like that, but they get on camera and they go, they act like they're in a ransom video. Like they're like, if you want insurance, call the number below. <laughs> it's like there's somebody off camera with a gun pointed at them. You don't, you know, you don't have, that's, yeah. that's what you, you know, if you want to focus on something, focus on being likable. Right. And that's all you need to be like. I tell people, you don't have to be me. I'm, I'm a dork. I'm quirky. I'm a weirdo. You don't have to be me. Be you when, you know, you is, you know, likable. Yeah. So, you know, be that guy, you know, if you're, be that guy that, you know, is in that state of mind that, you know, when they told you your firstborn was delivered or when she said yes, or when you got the promotion or whatever, you were excited, you were in a good spot. Like you were loving life be that guy or gal, you know, don't, don't look like, you know, there's some jihadi on the other line, you know, looking to, to, to cap you if you don't say, you know, Alu Akbar, you know, it's just, I don't know, I'm probably going over the line here, but, you know, be likable. And that's all you got to focus yeah. on. You know, be, smile. It's a little I, thing. Smile, look at the camera yeah. and be happy. I know like following just your personal Facebook profile, I know you've, sorry. You've, no, no, no. I think, I think the analogy was definitely. No, no, no. I'm saying sorry for if you follow my personal Facebook profile. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but like following your, your personal Facebook profile, you, you live by what you just said there. Like you only share authentic things. It's interesting because it's real. It's you. It's mm -hmm. your family. And like, that's what people want. And again, there's this, there's this mindset that a lot of people have where it's like, oh, I need to be sitting in a BMW uh, sipping champagne. Uh, well, hopefully with, not while you're driving. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but again, it's just the, the, the falseness that a lot of people chase or the fakeness. Um, I think it's actually a detractor at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, I do a, I do a training where I talk about this and 
the in today's uh especially when you t- you know you talk about let's talk, let's talk about seniors you know seniors get marketed to a lot a lot i mean they can't they can't go a day without their phone ringing someone telemarketing them going to their mailbox getting a thousand and one postcards right. um they they get marketed to a lot and so it comes down to who do i trust and trust is, I think, a lot of times what is the missing component in uh, a lot of sales and marketing today is there's a lot of phoniness and there's, there's a lot of who do I trust? And because trust is, is kind of that, that missing commodity in, in a, lot of the, a, lot of, a lot of the ways of how things are, are marketed and sold today. Yeah. And what video allows you to do when, you, when you're doing it properly is video allows you to establish a level of trust and rapport before you get on the phone, before you knock on their door, before you send something in the mail. You know, it's a matter of uh, they see you, they trust you. They even think of you as an authority figure because look, you're on video. Um, there's an element of, of uh, what video does so well is it builds trust and it, it conditions the buyer to want to hear more. Yeah. It conditions the buyer to, to be receptive, at least of a, of, of a message. And I think that that's something that get, is missing a lot in sales and marketing today. So a lot of uh, the agents that we work with at Lead Heroes and the agents here in the Facebook group, um, their focus is the senior insurance market. So you mentioned seniors a second ago. You know, Can you speak to anything on the YouTube side um, about you know, how seniors participate? And I've seen it just kind of from the sidelines I've noticed over the past, I'd say five years, um, a, a pretty big jump. I mean, I remember experimenting with Facebook ads, trying to target seniors and not having a lot of success because they weren't really on the platform to today. You know, I feel like all these digital platforms, you can potentially reach seniors now. So I would love to hear anything that you, any insight that you could share about targeting seniors or marketing to seniors on a platform like YouTube and, and kind of yeah. what you've seen. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, here's how I, uh, so let me broadly say this. Seniors are on YouTube. They're on YouTube. Um, I can go with a lot of different, uh, you know, real life anecdotal evidence where, you know, my grandpa is, uh, I, I, he shares videos to his Facebook, you know, about, you know, I won't talk, you know, you can assume what his political ideology is. Um, and he shares all these conspiracy videos. Um, they're on YouTube. And it's, it's actually a really large, and, you, and the way you can tell that they are is, I would just tell you, just, just in an incognito browser in, in Google Chrome, go to YouTube and type in Medicare. Just type in Medicare. Um, who watches Medicare content? Well, I think it's safe to say seniors do. 65 plus, uh, you know, yeah. You're, yeah, you're, I mean, it's not, my, 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 my 36 year old wife isn't. Yeah. Um, and so, and, you know, my seven year old son isn't seniors do just look at the just on medicare alone look at some of the videos that have hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of of views and it's not one video it's a lot of videos yeah that's just one that's just one thing um seniors uh go to google they go to youtube and they watch content and they watch they you know they watch all kinds of stuff google ads controls YouTube ads. You know, if you want to run a YouTube ads, you do it through Google ads, the same place that you would do, uh, you know, Google search ads or Google display ads or mm-hmm. shopping ads, whatever the case is. You do YouTube ads from the same platform. Google owns YouTube. So in Google ads, you have the ability to target people who are 55 uh, to, 60, uh, to, to 65 plus. And we've seen it. And, and again, I mean, more evidence. I mean, we've, we've targeted uh, and we've, 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 we've worked with people who target Medicare, who target final expense, who target um, uh, insurance for elderly. One of our, our students in our program, uh, he does life insurance and he, he'll write anybody, but the vast majority of his leads and he's, he's spending up to $200 a day. He's not like wow. just, he's not just, he scaled from $25 a day to $200 a day. That's where yeah. he's at right now. And he'll scale again. And the reason he's doing that is because all of his results are coming from senior, well, I call them seniors. If you're watching this and you're in this age range, forgive me, 
no no harm no foul no 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 uh, harm uh, mentioned but here but majority of his clients written applications are from seniors who are in their mid 50s yeah and so it works and and he loves doing and the reason why he's scaling is because he's writing and submitting life insurance applications with an average premium of 1600 to 2000 dollars uh, an app healthy people just you know they want insurance options would would you say do you think it's more competitive like do you think it's i guess to rephrase like do you think it's better to target seniors in a way for insurance agents because there's probably less content geared towards them compared to targeting someone in their 20s 30s or 40s no i i, I wouldn't say that i mean the way that you're going to target them is you're going to target them more on a um, in a more of a nuanced way so you can target them based on what they're watching I don't particularly recommend that because it's not a very, very scalable method, Right. but you can target them based on what they're searching for. You can target them based on what they're doing around the platform based on, you know, maybe they watch this video. Now they're watching three of these other videos in this topic, you know, it could be something maybe from uh, world war II history. It could be uh, something on, you know, a great thing to target for seniors is Fox news. Um, yeah. Just the facts. You know, a lot of seniors like Fox News. Um, it's a more conservative crowd, typically a little bit older, and um, and Fox News dem- and Fox News their demographics point to this anyways. But a lot of people are watching this content, and you can just target people who are watching that stuff, knowing that that's who, where your audience is at. With with a- any advertising platform, the goal is to get to where the fish are biting. You got to put your right. line where the fish are biting, and. Uh, so it's a, it's a very viable way. You can definitely target people. Is it, is it more competitive? I would almost argue that um, there's more inventory because there's a lot more seniors that are watching YouTube than, well, I can't say, I mean, there's a lot of my kids watch YouTube. So, but there's, there's a, there's a lot of people. We, we see Medicare uh, leads coming in. We see final expense leads coming in. I mean, there are fish in that pond. Yeah. So if someone's brand new, I mean, here's, here's something I really wanted to ask you today too. So if someone's completely brand new to this and they want to start a YouTube channel or they potentially want to start doing YouTube ads, I mean, what would be like the very first thing that you would recommend if someone was like, Hey, I've never done this before. I really want to start doing some videos. Yeah. What would you tell? What would you tell them? If you want to get started with YouTube ads, you have no background in it, no knowledge in it whatsoever. I mean, selfishly, I would tell you to go to my YouTube channel and watch yeah. my content. Um, I, I, I have a three-part series on YouTube ads for beginners, specifically for this, how to break it down, how to set up your accounts, how to run ads. Um, I have no problem putting that content out there. You know, people work with us and they don't work with us simply because of the content. They work with us because of, you know, what we do on the back end. But it's, um, I would suggest doing that. And, and I've even, you know, I jump on a lot of sales. I do sales calls every day for, for people who want to work with us. And, a lot of times I tell them, look, I don't think you're ready for this. I would suggest go watch my YouTube channel, subscribe by the way. And um, once you have more of a feel for it, then let's take the next step. I, I, look, I, I, I'm not interested in selling people and, and showing them how to round third when they can barely step in the batter's box. Right. And so that's what I recommend to people is to, uh, it's very, it's, 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 it can be done. It's, it's not as daunting as you might think it is. Um, you can run ads. Again, that's not to me. That's not where the magic is. The magic is in is in the offer. The magic is in is in who, what you're saying and how you're presenting it and how simple you make it. Um, I always tell people all the time that nobody walks in the direction of a cloud. They only walk in the direction of that which is made most clear to them. And so, you, even if it's to their detriment, and so you have to you have to tell your story in a way, and you have to make your value proposition in a way, and your offer in a way that's not only attractive but is so easy to understand. There's little, there's no friction in the brain. Uh, you can grasp it. Uh, you can attain it. You can aspire to it. You can have it. You can see yourself doing it, whatever the case is. And if you can do that effectively, um, I don't care if you're selling blue jeans, bubble gum, or, you know, private islands in the Bahamas, you can be successful. We'll definitely link to specifically that video in the comment section once this video is over, you guys, so you can jump right to that. And and yes, like I was saying, I think earlier in, in this conversation, uh, Nick has a ton of content on his YouTube channel specifically about this, a lot of stuff that he's really taking the time to break down step by step. Um, so definitely check that out. A question I would have too is, so again, if someone's new to this, would you say that they need to have um, like 
videos uploaded on a channel before doing ads or can they do that completely separately and just do ads completely separately i mean i have a few different channels um but when you're running ads you're typically not running ads that are in public view of you know the, the public can't view them on your channel similar to facebook if you're familiar with this you can make it towards not a, a post that people see it's right it's a it's an unlisted video so it's on the back end of your channel youtube itself its algorithm is able to distinguish where views come from they can say the views come from an ad or they come from an organic thing uh personally I think the best practice, you can do one of two things. You either have a channel that you use just for ads. You just create a channel. It's not hard. Create a, a Google account. Go to ad or go to accounts.google.com. Create an account just for ads. And you just have unlisted video there. The only, the only thing that is, it's used for is the little picture that you choose as your profile picture, your avatar. That's all. Um, I don't do it that way because I had already was already down the road on it. So what I do is I just upload videos twice. Uh, change the title. And one is used as an unlisted ad. And if um, I'll give you an example. Like if you go to my YouTube channel, I have testimonials. I run those as right. ads sometimes. Um, so what I do is I have a, an, an ads version and I have the public version because I do want that to be publicly seen. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do, if you're going to run straight from your channel, I would probably upload it twice, rename them, have one for ads and one for just your channel. Uh, but if you're running just a pure ad, then I wouldn't even put that on your channel for the public to see. No, that makes sense. Um, and if so, like the other end of it, right? So if someone, maybe someone just wants to uh, like create organic traffic or create leads organically through vlogging, right? Or through mm -hmm. a series of videos, you know, what, what sort of advice would you give to an agent who's trying to do something like that? Uh, first is you have to know what it is your audience wants. People, a lot of times will make content not for their audience. As weird as it sounds, people make content for their own ego and for themselves. You have to define what your channel is. Do you mind if I share my screen? I actually would. No, go ahead. Yeah, I'd, I'd love share my to. Screen. And uh, so first we have to answer who is the audience? All right. Who are we trying to serve? Who, who are we looking to, to work with? And once we know that, then we decide what is my channel about? So what I mean by that is, weird as it sounds, you'll have people say, you know what, my channel is a, uh, a life insurance channel. Um, and you'll say a life insurance channel. Okay, so you go to their channel and they've got recipes there for how to make chicken piccata. And um, it's not sinking here, but it should kick in just a moment. But it's, you wanna know like, what is my channel about? And what is, what is the purpose of it? And, and you have to stay very unified to that. You know, if I were to watch, um, uh, we'll go with the popular, you know, like Breaking Bad. Like Breaking Bad was one of my favorite shows. Yes. I knew what Breaking Bad was about. I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly uh, what, what we were doing. Now, if I tried to, um, if I tried to make a video, if I tried to make a video of, you know, or Breaking Bad of Vince Gillian tried to make a video and it was like Walter White and he was trying to lose weight, that doesn't really fit with what Breaking Bad is. And that's not what the audience came to watch. Right. Right. And so you have to, you have to think about this in the exact same way. So who's the audience? What is my channel about? And then you have to just make content solely for that. So for me, my, my channel is YouTube ads for beginners. I want to take beginners on a journey of how to start YouTube ads. That's what I want to do. I don't make, and I'll make some fringe stuff, but it's all centered around YouTube ads. And you have to stay true to what your purpose is and what your channel is. And a good thing for you to do is if, you know, if you're an insurance channel, let's say your final expense or your, you know, your Medicare, what are the top 10, I don't know why this isn't doing it, but what are the top 10 questions uh, that your audience is answering or asking what is it that they're looking for what is it that they're desperately trying to find what sales questions what objections do you find yourself in every single day so you know, there's a there's a there's a book and uh it, you know, it's by um marcus sheridan and the title is is they ask you answer yeah that's it they ask the question you better answer it and that's all you need to do you know oh, if there you we can, go yeah if you, if you can answer the questions that they're asking 
that's, that's powerful because you have to think about it. You know, YouTube is a search engine, right? It's the number two search engine in the world. And so if you start titling your, your, your videos with the questions that people are typing in, what does, how do I, right? Can I, you know, if you start working it that way, then you'll start to get a little more traction. The other thing is you have to be consistent. You're not going to be Justin Bieber overnight, especially if you talk about insurance. Only Justin Bieber is Justin Bieber, <laughs> right? Yes. You know, PewDiePie has been at this for like 15 years. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. you know, my kids love Dude Perfect. I don't know if you know who Dude Perfect yes. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Same you know, they've been doing it for years. You, you, there's only so many of those people. Right. And so for you, you can't get discouraged when you put out a video and 10 people watch it. And, and four of those views are you and two of them are your mom. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. You can't get discouraged. You have to be consistent. If you don't quit, you're going to win. And so yeah. if you are consistently staying on this, you're consistently answering the questions, you're consistently doing it. And then you have to figure out ways to get people to the channel. So whether that is putting it in, in blog articles, sending it out in your email. So you make a question, you take your number one question, right? And so you, you make a video of your question. You send that out to your email database, put it in a blog, and all of that routes to a sales page. Right? That, that you do that over and over and over and over right. and over and over and over and over again. That's what you want to do because the one thing that video is going to do when you do it consistently is when you show up, you gain authority. You are the one that people think of when it comes to Medicare. You're the one that people think of when it comes to final expense. You're the one that people think of when it comes to annuities. You're the one that they think of in all this stuff. The more you show up, the more authority you gain, the more authority you gain, the more money you make. It's that simple. You show up in a credible way, in an authentic way, in a real way, in a non-slimy way. Right. You gain authority. And when you gain authority, people will buy stuff from you. And they'll pay more for it. You know, if Kim Kardashian wanted to sell insurance tomorrow, I bet you she would outsell me on day one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just Think of the, uh, it's not like she's Kim Kardashian. Think of the ugliest dude you've ever known who's a celebrity. That dude would yeah. outsell me too. Yeah. You know why? Because in the minds of people, they're authorities. Even if it's not on the topic, people want to do business with them. People want to listen to them. People want to be around them. They want to be associated with them. You show they up. Have, they already have scalable audiences to consume video. So yeah, I mean, totally makes sense. Well, it's like, you know, you know, the analogy I always give is, this, again, Kim Kardashian can come up with a line of dog food tomorrow and she'd sell a million dollars worth of it Yeah, because she's Kim Kardashian. She's, she's an authority. And so you have the same power. You don't have it at the same scale, let's be honest, but you have the same power. You have the same ability in your marketplace. You're not trying to be a global icon. But you have the same power in Sandusky, Ohio. You have the same power in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. You've got the same power here in Mesa, Arizona to show up to your marketplace, whether it's via ads or via organic. <clears throat> so if you keep answering what they keep asking, you gain credibility, you gain authority, and you sell more and you make more. And so it's, it's, it's not a match. It's not some like voodoo magic uh, guru stuff. Like this is just basics basics right? yeah 101 you know, you're, you're delivering you're delivering value based on what your audience is asking for if you send your channel around that you can be winning you know if a, if a winning strategy if all you did in your in your in your youtube strategy if all you did is you had a couple of playlists right we'll call these playlists and all you had was questions that they ask maybe how to's you know and then testimonials not a room to write testimonials. You get the idea. And you just yeah. had video after video after video of these things, you know, and you're using titles that people are searching for. You're using right. keywords that they're searching for. There's all kinds of free content online. You can research this stuff, but you just do that. That's a winning strategy. And the best thing about it is it's evergreen. Simple. You don't too. have to, 
it's a library. Yeah. You know, the thing about like Facebook is it's worse than the 24 hour. It's worse than the 24 hour news cycle. You know what the 24 hour news cycle is? It's when it's, it's, it's a big story today and tomorrow you forgot about it. It's another news story. Facebook's like 60, 60 second news cycle. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's the it's the flick of a the flick of a thumb. Yeah. On a, on a screen and it's gone. It's a news feed, right? That's how it's built. But with YouTube, you're not in a 24 hour news cycle. You're in a library, and there's a difference, right? Because people are yeah. searching for things, they're looking for things. Now, don't get don't get frustrated. You know, like I said, when 10 people watch it, you know, you know what I'd rather have if 10 people watch my video, and three of them were customers. Do you know that's a whole lot better than if a million people watch the video and no one is a customer? Yeah. CPA. You know, yeah, it's cool to have a million views. But I'd rather have three customers, to be honest with you. I agree. I so, agree. You know, don't get caught up in these vanity metrics and think, oh, my subscriber count is low. And, and, and I understand. Like, I want to build my subscribers and I want to build my views. But I want to build my views and subscribers because I want I want YouTube to pay me so I don't have to ask anybody else to pay me. That's what I want. So, um, you know, to be very honest about it. But for most people, like, they get caught up in this this viral vanity metric of it not being, you know, they think they've got the, – listen, you're talking about insurance, right? You're not, you're not exactly breaking the internet. But you don't have to. You don't have to. So not, um, that's not that's not what it's about for you. This isn't TikTok. Yeah. The the first thing you wrote down here. So step one, you know, knowing your audience. It kind of took me back to I don't know if you read Dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson, but he he goes really deep into basically mapping out like who your ideal customer is. So I, I feel like that's something that you know, should be a big focus, right? Is you have to really put your shoes in, you know, if you're selling Medicare, what does your typical Medicare prospect, what are they asking? And then, you know, I think the more enveloped you are in their life and in what these people are interested in, right? And again, you know, as an insurance agent, I, I felt like Lead Heroes was really easy to market because I was the audience, right? Like I knew um, and so I feel like there's, there's a lot of focus that should probably go there to start just to kind yeah, of, and, you, and, and knowing your audience, I think when people do this and I do this exercise with people, they'll all say, who's your audience? Um, I like 55 year old men. Why? Right. Well, more than that, like, tell me, tell me who they are. Well, they, um, they're affluent. Well, why? Well, because they, you know, they had a good job and they recently retired why like you know just keep asking why and keep right. drilling down keep drilling down it's more than you know the type of shoes they wear and the sweater vests that they that they prefer it's you have to really drill down into who they are you know what do they care about on a deep level because the, the big thing about this is is nobody and this is you know something i learned uh, I, I have the privilege of being in donald miller who's the author of story brand and his mastermind and he always talks about nobody solves pro- external. You know, nobody looks to solve an external problem. They, they're not trying to solve external problems. They're trying to solve internal problems with external products, right? And so you have to think about what is the internal struggle? What is it that they believe in their core? Who are they as people? What do they care about? What are they passionate about? And it's more than golf and wine. I promise you. Ask why they're passionate about those things. But if you understand their internal struggles or their internal desires, their, as, their aspirations, then you can address it with external situations and products like insurance or whatever. And so, yeah. or an annuity or whatever the case might be. And so always ask why in the audience and always try to figure out what it is that they're dealing with from an inside out level. And, and that's where you can be successful. I really, I love your hand drawn, the, just the hand drawn, kind of what you have written out here. I think this is such a great, like easy jump off point for someone who's new. Um, We've already been on for about 40 minutes. I don't want to take up too much of your time and something that I feel like is great for what's next when we're looking at, you know, you're generating leads, whether it's organic or paid traffic, um, you know, where are those leads going to go, right? Your next step in the sales process, you want to put them in a funnel. Um, Nick and I actually have a, a mutual friend. His name is Will Shaw, and he is owner of uh, Better Agency. And I'm a huge fan of CRMs. I've talked so much to you guys about 
different CRM systems, you know, what you can do with them, why you should pay for them. Um, and this is a really exciting CRM. It's, it's very new and Will has, was in the space for a long time. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, Nick, but I believe you actually invested in the company. So now you're a part of it. Yeah, um, I have equity in now. Yeah. yeah, I would love for you to talk a little bit about um, Better Agency and kind of what makes it unique and how, you know, a CRM like that could really help agents, whether they're generating leads by phone, mail, YouTube, mm -hmm. or in between. Yeah, I mean, so Better Agency is kind of the, the brainchild of uh, some of my original partners, uh, Will Shaw, uh, Preston Schmidley, and uh, McBilly C. And what it is, is it's an insurance CRM. And I'll be honest with you, I know this is probably not uh, who most of the crowd is, but it, we, we cater right now to property and casualty agents uh, for both personal lines and now commercial lines. And so that is... What it does, it's, it's, it's taking the, the stress out of having to learn automation, taking the stress out of having to configure a CRM. Everything's done for you. Uh, we wrote all the copy for the email sequences, all the text messages. Everything's done for you. If you can flip on a light switch, you can create cross-sell campaigns, uh, renewal campaigns, claims campaigns, service-based campaigns. Everything that points back to a Google review. It's a, it's a fully functional CRM where everything points back to a sales opportunity from sales to cross selling to claims to renewals to service. Everything is teed up there to use. I mean, I, I still run a, a personal lines, a property and casualty agency, and uh, it's what we use and it is, it's great. I mean, I, and I know it's weird because I'm, of course I'm going to say that, but it's, you know, it's something that we, we went from Infusionsoft, which was confusing, uh, and hard and there was friction for my team. We went to active campaign, but really having something that's insurance focused that has, that takes all the guesswork out of everything. And I can see everything from a pipeline stage uh, and I can see reporting. I can see everything. It's really been beneficial. I mean, um, if you're a personal lines or if you're a property and casualty agent or you do property and casualty, I would highly suggest checking it out. Um, just at betteragency.io. You can do, you can schedule a live demo with me or somebody else on our team. Or you can watch a recorded demo from me. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a really great tool and it's getting better every single day. It is relatively new. Um, went live kind of in, a uh, uh, December of 2019, uh, November, December area. And so it's all custom made. It's not, it's not white labeled anything. It's not built on anybody else's platform. It's custom from the ground up. Um, and, uh, it really seeks to solve a lot of the problems that agents have myself included. And so uh, it's getting better every single day and we're, we're excited for where it's going. Is this something that a final expense or a Medicare agent could use, but they would have to put more time into customizing it since it's not really pre-built for them? Yeah, I, I would say they could use it, but they, you know, all the triggers are there, everything is there, but they'd have to probably do some, some work to okay, yeah. customize all the copy that we've, that we've sure. written for them. Yeah, I've seen, I haven't actually been able to do a demo yet, but I've, I've seen a bunch of screenshots and I've seen some of the videos and really the reporting I thought looked really simple, clean and, and, and mm -hmm. beautiful. And reporting I think is one of the biggest myths, again, from, from a marketing standpoint, right? How do you know if the marketing's working? Well, it's through reporting on sales. Yeah, you gotta and, track it. Yeah, you gotta track it. And, and so many agents out there fail at tracking. Um, and, and how can you scale what's working if you don't know exactly what's working? So, um, yeah, I mean, whether definitely check out betteragency.io, you know, if you're a PNC agent, I think you'd be crazy not to use them. Um, we are, we have an article on our website where we compare uh, the top 10 CRMs and we want to uh, make it a much longer list and compare more CRMs. We want to get better agency listed on there. Yeah, let's put better agency yeah. up there with everybody. Get, a, get yeah. all the green check marks in the better agency column and all the red X's in the other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to get some of that content out there. Um, you know, before we go here, Nick, any, any last thoughts that you'd like to share? Uh, you know, I would just encourage people that uh, who are on the ledge as far as, you know, I run into people and they think video is a waste of time or it's a time waste or they're scared of it. I would just say that... Um, if you consistently bet on yourself and you consistently do this, you can seek more consistent results. And I think that uh, it's foolish to think that video isn't effective. I mean, it's how we can, we're here on video. I mean, video is how people right. consume content. And if you just figure out how to deliver the content that your audience is looking for, you can be wildly successful over time. Again, it's nothing that happens overnight. 
nothing that happens overnight, but nothing that's really good does. Um, and so if you will just step off that ledge uh, and, and implement, take action on it, you can see really great things happening. Um, and you can do that. Again, if you'd like to learn more information, I would suggest you go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, watch all the videos. I'm trying to get my watch hours up. Uh, so watch, put it on, just put, just put it on YouTube so and that's put why, it on the chat, that's why tab and let it play all the videos. That's why you um, have your kids watching your videos. I see what's yeah. going I see what's going on here, man. Yeah. I, I, I'm very honest with you. You know, I'm trying to get to the point where, where YouTube will start paying me. So you know, if YouTube will pay me then I don't have to ask anybody for money and I'm right. good. Right. Um, so I'll take that. I'll take those YouTube dollars. Um, but no, I mean, just watch the video. It's, it's there to help yeah. you. I'm trying to put out content at least once a week. I got a good video coming out this, uh, I'm going to be making this weekend uh, where I'm going to be talking about how to use YouTube ads for B2B sales, nice. uh, B2B acquisition. So things like that. And um, it could be something that's really beneficial for you. So I hope you, you enjoy that. Cool. Nick, what's the, what's the best place for someone to find you if they wanted to, to, to get a hold of you? YouTube. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're definitely going to link- respond to all my comments. You know, I want to, I want to push the YouTube algorithm. So I'm, I'm sure to res- I'm, I try to respond to all the comments. You got a question for me, ask it publicly. I'll answer it publicly. There's nothing Perfect. I want to say. Yeah. So we're going to definitely link specifically the YouTube ads for beginners. And so that will be in the comment section here below this video. Um, definitely subscribe, like, turn on your notifications for Nick's channel, you guys. Uh, Nick, really appreciate your time coming on and, and chatting. And hopefully we can get some uh, senior insurance agents out there motivated or excited to start their own YouTube channel or get into YouTube ads. Uh, and yeah, appreciate your time and, and your value that you've shared with the audience here. Awesome. And thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Cool. Cool. Awesome, man. Hey, that was fantastic. I, I Thanks, thought that went really well. I had a feeling that once we started chatting, I wouldn't be able to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's what was that just uh, with your screen share? Were you just writing on an iPad? Huh? That was really cool. Yeah. So I, I use a, I have a Microsoft uh, Surface uh, book. And so I have oh. Microsoft OneNote on it and I have it on my screen. Nice. So it syncs between one notes. Yeah. And so I just share my screen as I'm writing on here. It syncs it on my. That's freaking brilliant. That really yeah. is. That, that was really clean. Yeah. I do that. what I, I do that every week in our, in our group uh, when, when, I, when I do my, uh, my support calls and stuff like that. So. Cool, man. I, it's like, I can't, I don't feel like I can educate or do anything without it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it like, you know, like you're saying with authority, I think that gives you a ton of authority, you know, when you're, you're writing on the screen like that. Yeah. Uh, um, I will get a copy of this over to you. Feel free to, you know, share it, do whatever yeah. you want with it, upload it to YouTube. Um, and yeah, you know. Uh, oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely upload it to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, man. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get this over to you probably before the end of the night. And yeah, man, hit me up if, uh, you know, anything else. Sounds good, man. Appreciate cool. it. Cool. All right, have a good one.